Here we are. Hello, chums. Is anybody out there? I bet my sister's there. Let's just see. Bum, 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 bum. It comes up on the phone as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Nobody there. Oh, there's two. Is that us or is that two people? <laughs> that's us, us, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. It might be just me and Fiona. Oh, there's Lawrence. Hello. Hello, Lawrence. If there's more than two of you, we've got to do the show. It's equity rules. <laughs> Apocryphal, but I always stick to that. Oh, Gavin. Hello, uh, Lawrence. Hello, sexy people. Hello, Chris Stratton. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. Oh, my sister. Hello, Fiona. Mark Connor. Hello. Hello, guys. Hello, chums. I'm here waiting in anticipation. What for? <laughs> Gosh. Benny Hill. Benny Hill. Benny Hill. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Have we Ooh. got the book? I have got the book. Oh. Yes. <laughs> hello, Lane. There we go. Hi, buddy. How are you doing, Lane? We'll just wait for a few more people yeah, absolutely. to get here. Well, yeah, I mean... Hello, Fiona. I can see your comment today. Hello, Robin Gemma. Yeah, my sister had problems with her internet and she thought it was this, but everybody else could see it apart from her. So don't tell her, I just, I, I muted her screen and nobody else's. No, I'm joking, I didn't really. It's, uh, she lives in a gorgeous cottage and her signal's a bit crap. Hello, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hello, viewers. You're very good. Very good. Did you meet? Oh, I'm going to start it. Yeah, we're <laughs> <laughs> oh, No questions yet. Talk to my agent. Blimey, sexy people. Does that include me? I, I, I don't know. Who said sexy people? Leah Mason. Mark Connor. Love your talking pictures recommend. Thank you. Yes. Uh, did you see today's film, by the way? Raising the Wind tomorrow. Uh, a Carry On in Disguise. Starring Leslie Phillips and James Johnson Justice and Liz Fraser. The film that introduced Jim Dale to the Carry On guys. Very important in the history of comedy, that film. Bless his host was on this morning on Forces TV, was it? Oh, well, I, 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 what? I've never heard of Forces TV. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, so Leah is listening in from Florida. Oh, wow. wow. Hello. We've gone transatlantic. Oh, gosh, what time is it over there? It's about lunchtime, isn't it? One o'clock in the afternoon? About five hours. <coughs> Excuse me. COVID. No, it's not. Um, black <laughs> okay. humour, folks. Should we go? Should we start? I yes. think we should. Oh, hold on. Hello. Hello, chums. Hello, viewers. Benny Hill, the complete companion, or and my publisher uh, said we've got Merry Master of Mirth was what he was called. I think um, in on Japanese television that was like the sort of translation of the Benny Hill show or something, or they called it that. So it's a long title, but it's really the complete companion. So when did you write this? Uh, nineteen ninety nine. It's okay. party like it's nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, it's my third book. So I'd done the Karen Companion in ninety six. Uh, the Monty Python Encyclopedia, which came out in 1998, because that was a big old book to research and write. It took me about a year and a half. And then Benny Hill was 99. And Python did really well. And it's they're the sort of they're very different um, uh, comedic um, uh, expressions, but they are the sort of bookends of British comedy that is very popular in America. So Python did really well in America. And my publisher, BT Batsford's. Um, uh, did that uh, the first four books I wrote um they said will you do a book on Benny Hill and I said yes with alacrity so that was it but those, those were the days when deals were done with a handshake in a pub I miss those days well I miss Aww. the pub but I miss those days of, of absolute you know gentleman publishers it's, this is I'm not taking the mickey it was seriously that that's the way it works I was in a pub in 1998 end of 98 I think Python had just come out and um Richard Reynolds my my commission editor said do you want to do a book on Benny Hill and I said yes and we shook hands on it and that was it and I got a contract in like three days later or something so oh. yeah um I don't know so people are saying that our the book looks like a mirror image it may be because we've got a new no I think I think it's always flipped isn't it this is my better side you see so so no it's not it's um I think it's always it's always reversed isn't it? no, no no I've noticed that before it's all, it always is I think is it yeah yeah oh, this is this is the this oh, is yeah. the rare through the mirror version this is the Lewis Carroll version Right, um, go on. questions are coming in. Good, a plenty. <clears throat> a plenty. Um, With a, yes, go on. Let me just scroll back up. Um, uh, okay, let's have a look. Let me just see. Lots of just lovely comments. Talk amongst yourselves, you know. <laughs> we, could, we could do a, a sort of early the fastest milkman in the West sing along, shall we? Okay, go on. First question, Gavin. 
I found your question. Hello, Gavin. Is it true that Benny's father applied for a job on the Titanic but was turned down? This is absolutely true, yes. Wow. Absolutely true. Thank the Lord he didn't get the job, basically, because he would have been working um, below stairs or, you know, with his feet uh, in all the uh, the bilge. So, yes, he, well, he was absolutely going to get that Yeah, in 1912, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 So how did Benny's career start? Um, well, it's a long story. I'll do the short version. Uh, it's in, <laughs> we've got to buy the book. Um, it's, it's, he, he, he was obsessed with comedy. Uh, he was born Alfred Hawthorne Hill. Um, but his, uh, he loved comedy and loved, he loved Jack Benny. So he named himself Benny mm. Hill, the, the great American comic. He was his hero. Um, and he would go to, to, um, uh, music halls and variety theatres and, and see the, the, usually the, the very cherubic, sort of uh, fat man who was the clown surrounded by beautiful girls and he thought that's the job for me and he wanted to be a comedian and that was it really and uh, did his national service and served during the second world war in the army in Remy um R-E-M-E and um uh, and and did the, the camp shows like a lot of them did a lot of those actors coming back from serving like Kenneth Williams and those sort of people were doing sort of the camp concert shows mm. and that was it that's how he started post-war so chris stratton asks what do you think his best period was the 60s 70s or 80s he likes the 70s benny it's good yeah i mean he didn't join it he didn't join thames until 1969 so yeah the 70s i mean i suppose so who's that is that uh what's his, it's chris 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 stratton. chris hi chris um i i guess you're a fan of the sort of the quite raunchy raucous um really outlandish seaside postcard sort of benny hill um, which was the seventies for sure on commercial television. Um, I've got I've got a lot of respect for his early stuff, his sixties stuff. I mean, I, I think it's it's sometimes forgotten that there was a, a thing called the Benny Hill Show, be it on BBC or ITV, from the mid nineteen fifties until the end of the nineteen eighties, without a year's gap. Um, so he was a television star for a long, long time, and his BBC work, which unfortunately is uh, not. Um, uh, uh, in, uh, not complete in the archives and very rarely gets any um, sort of releases or any exposure really really clever sort of film parodies um, and playing multiple characters I suppose the most famous one he did a, a jukebox jewelry um, spoof when he's all the people on the panel um, and he loved doing sort of film parodies which he did right until the end of his, his working career but he loved there's a, lo a lovely sort of spoof of um, Casablanca and the Maltese Falcon and those sort of films and he's playing both Sydney Green Street and Peter Laurie, so he loved doing those. So, so those are the BBC things. But that's a very long answer. I think my, I think he's at his peak in the sixties on BBC, but he's at his commercial peak in the late seventies, early eighties. I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, Fiona has asked that, or she said she starts with she loved Benny in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of Benny's performance as? The lovely toy maker. I, lo I love him as the toy maker. That's, it's, a, it's a funny thing because we'll probably come to to why. He, well, it's obvious why he's not on TV now, uh, whether you think that's right or not. But he pops up in his film. He made it, made a handful of feature films. One of the best is probably Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and it's a real sort of obviously a family film. And he's so good in it. I mean, he's a good actor. He's a really good actor, and it's such an adorable performance. Um, I love him in that. I, he's such a sweet. And when he does. He, Dick Van Dyke and Sally Ann Howes, uh, the whole sort of wind up doll thing um, in 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 the, the the fantasy land where where Chichi, but it's a flying car. If you've never seen it, of course you've seen it. But um, Ian Fleming um, story about a flying car, and it's a delightful film. Uh, and Benny is just so sweet in it, and he loved working with kids too. Don't forget. I mean, he, he, his his massive hero as a screen comedian was Charlie Chaplin. He thought Chaplin was the business. Um, so he would look at stuff like the kids, Chaplin and, and, and Jackie uh, Coop, uh, Coogan, um, and um, and think that's there's a real sort of artistry there and a real sort of clownish quality to Chaplin. So he loved working with all the kids on Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I love that. And Robert Helpman as the child catcher is one of the, the great grotesque performances <laughs> in cinema, isn't it? But, oh, uh, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. OK, well, um, question here from Lawrence. So I'm not sure this is quite factually true. You can correct this one. But he said, did Benny Hill ever work with Frankie Howard, given that they only died a few weeks apart? I thought well, no, it was it's hours. Hours, yeah, yeah. sure. Um, they, they were good mates. Uh, they didn't, actually. Um, there was there was a sort of there was often talk about doing something together, like a big uh, Christmas Thames special. Um, but they didn't. Um, no, and actually, uh, uh, 
yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll cover the, the, the death of, of, of Benny because it was actually, um, uh, Benny Hill died on, um, I think it was the Friday or Saturday of that Easter weekend, April 1992. Um, Frankie Howard died on the Sunday. So Benny died first, but was announced after because he, his body wasn't found for a day or two. Um, and, um, and Dennis Kirkland, who was a dear pal of mine, who was Benny's producer, director for Thames Television, often um, would, would uh, be the source that people would go to, the press would go to, to get a quote from Benny, and he would just make things up on Benny's behalf because they were really close friends. And Benny said, yeah, you, you talk to the press and you know. So he, he gave the press an obituary or a quote from Benny Hill in tribute to Frankie Howard. And of course, Benny never knew Frankie had died because he went first. Um, so yeah, it was hours, hours before. Yeah. Do you do you remember? Because this is my earliest yeah, yeah. record. Oh, you know, remembering who died famously. Where were you? <clears throat> when you um, heard the news. I can't remember where I was actually when I heard. I was, knew I was devastated. Um, that's quite. I remember. I, I think we might have mentioned this when we did um, Frankie Howard. But my, mm. you know, you always talk about the school teachers that really inspired you. And mine was a guy called Dr. Paul Wells, who was my film studies um, teacher at Sixth Form College um, and became a really good friend of mine actually um, and um, I remember him writing me a little note saying how we will miss Frankie and Benny um, and uh, not the not the restaurant chain <laughs> um, but um, uh, and, and it was it was really because they'd always been on TV and even though Benny had not been working on te on television for three years there was still sort of uh, an essence that he was going to come back and he certainly there was a contract uh, ironically there was a contract for Channel uh, Central Television um, in the post he hadn't opened um, so he was going to come back uh, and eventually about two years later Central did a series with Freddie Starr uh, which Dennis Kirkland directed and produced which was very much a sort of Benny Hill homage series but yeah no as I say they were, that's again a long answer but they were they were very good pals and, and admired each other uh, tremendously they, they, they thought each other was an absolute genius Okay, well, question here from Mark Connor. He says, was the little old bald-headed man yeah. his uncle? No, no. <laughs> Bless, no. no. Well, that'd be lovely, wouldn't it? No, he was Jackie, Jackie Wright, a little Irish character actor. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it on Jim now. I can't, she's out of shot. Got it. Ow. Well, so, <laughs> sorry. But uh, he's a genius. Now, he, he, he's the one, funny, because Benny did the occasional personal appearance in America, because he was huge in America. I think people forget how massive a star he was, and still is. I mean, sometimes, uh, I remember I was going to, I went to New York, oh gosh, in the 90s, after Benny had died, and some bloke in a bar said did you ever meet Benny Hill <laughs> because they ask every English person whether they knew Benny Hill or met Benny Hill or whatever uh, and he was a massive massive star so and, and apparently all the people wanted to not ask Benny w was about Jackie Wright and, and Jackie Wright actually sadly died um, uh, in the 80s Ooh, old, old man obviously but they would sometimes when he wasn't very well Benny was a lovely sort of taskmaster actually because he obviously creatively controlled the show as well Dennis Kirkland was the producer director but Benny was very much hands-on with the show it was the Benny Hill show when Jackie Wright was too ill to appear they would cut bits out of previous episodes and drop them in just so Jackie could get a paycheck which I think was quite sweet really. okay yeah. um okay so Paul Wilkinson says big carry-on fan but less so Benny Hill Get so out of my house. <laughs> you, you might convert him during this hour. Okay, jolly girl. I hope so. I hope so. I, I, I really, I really do because he's, he's worth. The thing is, there are, there are, and I'm not, I'm not uh, blanketly saying everything he did is great because they, there were, there were certain shows which I've, I've had to watch, well, I've watched them all for pleasure, but I've had, to, I've had to watch all of them because I worked on the, um, on the American DVD release um, about 15 years ago for A and E Arts and Entertainment in New York. Um, and and there were times in the sort of mid eighties when he really got a little bit. I was thinking, oh Ben, don't do that, you know. Um, but but at his best, and he was at his best for a long time. He's an absolute genius of comedy, and I think as a writer, he would always sort of joke that he stole all his own material because he would have a bank of TVs and they'd have one tune to to Spain and one tune to France. He was very much a European, loved travelling around Europe. But he he was a brilliant filmmaker and a brilliant clown so so yeah pick up the if if you go online now and get the american versions because you'll get sort of 
interviews that I conduct and I've done all the sleeve notes and things. A company called A and E, and it's like I think Benny Hill. They call it the early years, but that's it's all it's the complete twenty one years of his Thames career. Everything he did at Thames on I think a, a five disc set or something. So check out those and and treat yourself to one of those. <laughs> Um, no, it's seriously, because he's he's brilliant. I mean, there's stuff. There's there's one he did in the early '80s when he plays a clown. He loved to do mime. He was a really great mime, and he does this brilliant routine where he sort of strips down from a clown outfit just to his underpants, and then you think, oh, that's the way it's going to end. But it actually starts. It's wonderfully surreal. He starts actually removing the flesh and dropping it, and he becomes the skeleton of this thing. And it's, oh, wow. it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, you know, if, if Buster Keaton had done it, it would have been sort of a work of genius. But because it was dropped into a, a mid-'80s Benny Hill show, people just don't know about it. And it's, it's, so it's, he's, he's, worth, he's worth looking into. And then buy the book. <laughs> um, did you, on that note then, thinking about the ladies in Benny Hill, the angels, Benny's yes. angels, uh, did you meet with any of them? Yeah, loads of them, yeah, yeah. We did a thing... For this DVD box set uh, with a few of them, Sue Upton, I suppose, was was the was the uh, the leader, and she's a pal of mine. And uh, Uncle Ben, they all called him Uncle Ben, Uncle Benny. Um, and Louise English, you know, who became a big, big star, sort of West End musical star. Uh, yeah, they. I mean, most of this, there's a couple of people that that shall remain nameless who went to the press um, to to tell tales about him. But you know, I'm, I met so many people that worked with him both male and female, but who all absolutely just adored him. So, yeah, I, I've, I've met a lot. And, talk, and luckily to meet a lot of his late cohorts, like Nicholas Parsons, who did a lot of the Benny Hill shows, and uh, Henry McGee. Um, never met Bob Todd, alas. I'd love to have met Bob Todd, but anyway. Um, OK, do you think then that he was underused in films? Um, I suppose so, but... At, that was his own choice. Um, he preferred doing television. He preferred actually having control over what he was doing. So by the time he did Chitty Chitty Bang Bang that my sister mentioned and the, the uh, Italian job, uh, 1969, he then joined Thames and he would happily do, do like three shows a year. He would do three hour long specials a year. And he turned down offers to do sort of like runs of 13 weeks because he said he wanted them to be a special event. So they would tend to go out like sort of bank holiday Mondays or Sundays or Christmas week. Um, and they were a real event. Um, and uh, so, yeah, he, he just he, he, he would happily do three or four, sometimes sometimes two a year, uh, just hour long specials for, for Thames. And he, he loved doing that much more than films. But the, the films are worth looking out. Early stuff, uh, 1950s films. He did a couple of films I really like. Um, uh, Who Done It, which is an Ealing or one of the last Ealing comedies, um, which I really love. Um, it gives him a chance to do all sorts of crazy, crazy costume changes. And he's a proper detective in it. Um, but yeah, that's worth seeing as well. OK, well, a couple of questions here but from both our siblings that actually link quite nicely okay. together. So I'm going to merge... Not, they're not in the same house, are they? I don't know. Are, are they, they picked each other to be the one person they can meet in the park? Is that what it Maybe is? Maybe that's what it <laughs> is. OK, go on. Um, so the first question is, talking about another section of Benny's life, which was his songs, was mm. Ernie a number one hit? It was indeed. Christmas, 71, yes. And um, followed up by your sister who asks... Is it true that Benny <coughs> was really a milkman? Well, this is the, what it is, isn't it? Have you been comparing <laughs> notes? I know. Um, yes, he was, absolutely. Down in Eastleigh, uh, near Southampton. Uh, he, he, that was one of his early jobs, and he loved it. And, and he did do adverts for, for the, mar the milk marketing board later on. Um, but yeah, yeah, and, and it was all all that sort of like, oh, no, you know, that business. Um, it, it, was, it was based on him doing his rounds. Um, as do you a remember sort the of... last time we heard that song? Do you no. remember where it was? It was on a cruise ship. Oh God! It wasn't a cruise ship. Yes, <laughs> yes, it wasn't a cruise ship. It was. It was. I was doing a cruise for P and O, and it was. There was a. It was that the day when the when the weather was really bad. And we were. It hit the presses. The weather was so bad we couldn't even dock in France. So they just <laughs> left us floating, or you know, almost sinking out to sea. And that's right. There were lots of Brits guys, lots of British people on the top deck with the bar open. And there was. They were playing Benny. They did play Benny Hill. That's right. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. Uh, that, that that pleased me at the time. But yeah, as I say, he was he was beautifully successful across Europe. Okay, so Chris Stratton asks, do you think ITV would repeat any of his ten shows? I think they'd cut so much for fear of offending anybody. Yeah, it's a shame. I to to backtrack to that A and E set. I'm trying to find where mine is. I think it's. Oh no, it's just. It's down, I know it's. It's okay. Um. Uh, I might add it. I, if you look, if you watch the YouTube films, I I'm, I do an occasional essential DVD or Blu-ray to add to your collection. I might do Benny Hill at some point. 
in the next few days because the box set is lovely. Um, and that's a, a, a roundabout way of saying that when I was signed up to do that um, uh, assignment with uh, A&E in New York, um, I said, yeah, okay, fine, absolutely. And the whole thing, very exciting. All is 21 years at Thames. And I got an email from, I forget her name now, forgive me, but the person in New York. Um, and they said, oh, we just, just run episode one. And this is 1969 episode. So it's just run episode one. And I said, there's a, this, this, this sketch with this Chinaman. And there's this sketch where he's in drag. And, and I said, we, we got to cut those two sketches out. And I said, seriously, if you're cutting stuff out in 1969, you wait to 1982. Um, because you'd n be nothing left. So I said, look, you can't. What, who's going to buy it if it's cut? So I did a little disclaimer. It's a little bit like, I think um, I've got some of the Warner Brothers cartoons uh, and um, uh, Whoopi Goldberg comes on at the start and says some of these cartoons have, you know, sort of racial stereotypes in them or whatever. And she does a little disclaimer at the front. I said, look, I'll do you a little placard that comes up before the, before the, the show begins and say, look, this was made in 1972, say, and certain jokes you wouldn't crack these days, but... It's, mm. And I got away with it, so so they are completely uncut. The um, the, the the shows on those on those DVDs, um, and I w I would think uh, ITV did did do some some compilations uh, which they ran just after I think maybe Channel Four ran them as well um, just after he died, sort of nineteen ninety two ninety three time. Um, and you can certain you could certainly if they give me the job, I'm happy to do it. Um, I could I could I could do you a nice sort of ten week. You know, uh, best of Benny Hill from the Thames archives, which would not offend anybody. I can guarantee that. So I, I think that would need to be done for terrestrial TV um, because, you know, you make a choice to, to buy something and you buy the complete works. So of course, you want the complete works. But when it comes down to terrestrial TV, you've got to be very careful and, and quite rightly, too, you know, because some of the stuff you just wouldn't show and, and you shouldn't because some of it is really not cool. Um, but, you know, it's it, there's enough in there, as I say, to to do a nice sort of retrospective compilation. Yeah. You know. Well, um, there's a gentleman here called Damon Kimpton. Hello, Damon. And he says he's got a friend. She's a very glamorous 83-year-old lady mm -hmm. who has um, red nails and a bright red Aston Martin to match. And right. she claims she was a Benny Hill <laughs> angel. Okay. Uh, Benny's angels. And he said he knows her name is Mary and... Was there an angel called Mary, or is she just having him on? <laughs> well, she's probably not. I mean, that's quite a claim, isn't it? If you're going to make something, I mean, if you're going to claim something, you might as well say, you know, you're you're third in line to the throne or something. Um, eighty-three. I mean, she, she may well be. I mean, they weren't termed angels. I mean, she's too old. Forgive me. I mean, she's too mature. She's too vintage um, to be a, a, an angel because they didn't turn that phrase until until the Thames years, and that was like the the. the Seventies, early eighties, or late seventies. So most of the angels are, you know, in their sixties now. Um, but as I say, Benny was doing TV since the fifties. So yes, she could quite easily have done a BBC. There were there were lots of glamorous girls in the BBC shows for sure, and he did lots of stuff on stage. He didn't like doing the stage. Um, he he stopped doing stage uh, in nineteen sixty. But he all, he would do West End reviews, and they were packed with glamorous girls. Um, harking back to that, you know, I want to be that that guy there on stage, surrounded by all the glamour girls. So I, I like to think, yes, she probably is. But um, as for someone called Mary, I mean, I'd need more than that to go on. But um, yeah, go on, give her the benefit of the doubt, you know. Um, okay. Well, Daniel Marsh asks, did <coughs> Benny really have three TVs always recording the TV? Yeah, it wasn't recording as such. He would just watch it. He would stay. He'd love staying at home. He'd have a bank of TVs, as I said, it, um, and he would sit there. With with a a, a Coca Cola, advertising please, go fund me, um, <laughs> and um, um, and with a notepad and and watch the televisions usually with the sound down. Um, and as I say, he 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 loved um, mime artists. He loved Marcel Marceau. Uh, he loved Chaplin. He loved Harold Lloyd. Uh, he loved Jatati. Um, so he would watch all these all these uh, European comedy shows and write notes down and 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 then mould it into something that would work for him um so he although he was a brilliant um dialogue comedian vocal comedian and, and, and a, a mimic uh, i think he was his happiest as a, as a as a mime as a slapstick clown i think okay um we're getting comments that our screen is much crisper today better quality so we've invested in new kit we are investing in new yeah, kit. Yeah, we are, yes. I mean, I, I did mention it, and this is, I, I hate to do this, but what, these, these are all free, and I will not ever put a paywall on these. Um, but there is a, thanks to Gemma here, there is a GoFund, uh, me or us, 
um, account um, because we've got plans to do other things, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Because this lockdown, I, I know it's loosening and, and, you know, that's no neither here nor there. I'm not going to get political about it. But certainly in terms of, of theatres, um, where I've been doing a lot of work the last sort of two years or so, um, those are not going to be opening, I don't think, until the autumn. So and there's no cruises. I don't want to go on. A, I don't want to go on a cruise ship at the moment. <laughs> um, so so obviously yes. Um, so if you can if you can chuck us a few quid, you know, it's like I said I've done on the film today. Um, it's like if I do a live show and there's people in who meet me at the bar afterwards and and, and enjoyed the show, buy me a pint. So it's nice a fiver or whatever or whatever. But yes. Um, the, the the gear the gear is good isn't it it's good we are, we are, good we are, we are, we're upgrading you see, if i was watching this i'll be i'll be looking at what those book titles are and those dvd <laughs> titles are behind me and trying to see which doctor who's are missing on those uh on those toby jugs but anyway anyway back <laughs> back to benny oh this is a story about you oh yeah gosh from really? your sister she says when you went to new york you were asked whether you, you knew either Princess Diana or Benny Hill? That's what people said. Well, it wasn't me. I think I think that's what people did ask. Yeah, absolutely. I think only Wise told me that story um, when he because he was he was over there. I think after Erica died. I'm pretty sure it was after Erica died, and he was doing some sort of. I think it was just a holiday actually. I think he even was he was working over there, and he was stopped in the street by somebody, or, or he, he somebody heard him his English accent, and someone said, "Hey, are you English? Do you know Benny Hill?" And that was what they all they always asked people that because um, they were on all the time. But like the goodies in Australia. The Benny Hill show was on American TV all the time. Um, so he became huge with a load of very famous um, uh, fans. I mean, the, 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 the Burt Reynolds and Clint Eastwood and Mickey Rooney and uh, Michael Jackson and Greta Garbo and Hugh Hefner and all these people just <laughs> loved him. I know, well, yeah, he, <laughs> he, he loved Hugh Hefner. Um, but anyway, go on. <laughs> oh, OK. So do you know whether Benny Hill was friends with Bob Monkhouse? They absolutely were very good friends. Yes, yes. Um, they worked together quite a lot on the on the halls. Um, yeah, but, uh, one of Bob's absolute comedy heroes, Benny Hill. He adored him. Yeah. Okay, Neil White asks, Benny was a great comic songwriter, as we've you know been discussing. What are your favourites? We just had them on actually before we were the show. On, <laughs> and Alexa, don't talk to you now because she'll start. Um, I I. I, I I love his early stuff. Again, he, he worked with Pi Records quite a lot, and there's some really good songs which he tended to recycle on TV shows. Um, I think I think my favourite one is the is the Samuel Pepys song. He did that about three or four times on the telly, and it's really funny. And it's sort of um, they're all they're all innuendo, but there's some good songs in there. Harvest of Love and all those sort of things. There's they're on CD, and you can buy them for chips now. And I wrote the sleeve note for one of them, um, of one of the releases. So um, I might I'll get Gemma to put the the in the in the description box below the one that i wrote the sleeve notes for i don't get any money out of it but you know it puts them into context in terms of when benny was recording so those early ones he actually did a single i mentioned that whodunit film the Ealing comedy which is really worth seeing that's on talking pictures occasion i think it was one of my picks a, a week or so ago there's a single for that he recorded that was his very first um uh, release and the flip side is it, um, it's um, Memories Are Made Of This, the, the Dean Martin song. Ooh. And it's got a really good voice. Because usually all the, all the songs are comedy songs and he sort of hams it up a bit. But he plays that one straight and it's really nice. <laughs> so um, so they're worth, they're worth, that's something. I think that's on the one I did. That's a bonus. Um, Tomorrow's YouTube video. Tomorrow's YouTube. Oh, if I can dig it out. It's here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I've <laughs> got to find these things. The, I know, I know. Sometimes... The Museum of Comedy <laughs> Cottage. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um... <laughs> Okay, um, when Banny, Benny, uh, Banny, speak, Banny, uh, yeah, yeah. I can't speak. Uh, <laughs> yeah. When Benny sadly passed away, do you know what happened to his estate? Was it Ooh, donated? Yeah. That's that's a, that's another hour that show. Um, well, yes, I do know. Um, there's a, there's a show called Who Got Benny's Millions, which I was on. I think I was on it. Um, that sounds conceited, but I can't remember if I'm actually in the edit or not. I think I was, um, <laughs> um, which was a Channel Four documentary. Yeah, that was a long drawn out thing. He 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 died in test, so he didn't leave a will basically. Um, oh. So so he would have because he came from a fairly uh, uh, working class, um, underprivileged background, a bit like Chaplin, but not as as poverty stricken as Chaplin, but certainly not wealthy. Um, he would not trust banks, so he would have like literally thousands of pounds under the bed um oh, so this, you know yeah. um so so the money dennis kirkland who found the body and as i say was his, was his very good friend 
found a list of uh, uh, just bits of scraps of paper. He would always write sketches like that. He'd be in a, in a cafe and write them on the back of envelopes and, and post them to Dennis and say, I've just thought of this, you know. And he found this list and he never told me who, who, who got what, but there was a list of people that Penny, Benny was very close with. All, all the people from the from the cast basically and Dennis with with amounts by the name um which he was going to do for the will but didn't get around to doing it so it was a very muddled thing um Ooh. so yeah it's a long story as I say that documentary is probably on YouTube it's called who got Benny's millions which is like an hour uh, answer to your question basically okay uh Gavin asks did Benny once present an Emmy award to the uh, to Alexi Sailor Alexi Sale Sale Oh, hello, Sailor. Uh, hello, hello, <laughs> Sailor. Um, I, I think he did. He didn't like doing those things. I, I, I think he did. It, it rings a bell, yeah. Um, which is ironic because he always, he always claimed that, that alternative comedy killed his career, which isn't true. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. I mean, he, he, as I say, he didn't like doing those live things. He, he stopped in 1960, and then he did a thing in tribute to Eric Morecambe called Bring Me Sunshine, um, which was a live show, tribute show. He did the occasional. He would do the occasional American thing. Um, he was. He turned down a massive amount of money to tour America, um, live venues. He would call live theatre um, um, fingernails and aspirins because he would like this, and you know, just the, the, the nerves. He would just get so so tense about going on stage. But a live audience for a telly, he wouldn't mind because that was his domain. You know, Teddington Studios was where he felt the safest. But yeah, so, I think I think you're right in saying that. But yes. Um, okay, Paul Perkins asks, um, do you know how many singles or albums he recorded? A, a lot of singles. Uh, there were two albums, I think. One, one is, there, you can, if you go on eBay or Dis, Discogs, I love Discogs, oh my God. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like crack cocaine to me, Discogs. Um, uh, it, there's loads of, of re-issues uh, of those pie singles. But the album was called Benny Hill Sings, question mark, which uh, Tony Hatch produced, which is the one where Harvest of Love and the Samuel Peeps and all those are on there. Um, and he did one for Thames called This Is Benny Hill, or this, I think it's This Is Benny Hill, which was basically um, the album of the single of Ernie, the fastest milkman in the West, and some um, skits from the Thames, the early Thames TV shows. So those are the two albums, um, and there are various repackages of them. And um, but they're worth they're worth getting. But yeah, you you can buy them for next to nothing on discos, I'm sure. Okay, going back to Teddington. Yes. Um, John Burr here, and he says, um, I did a walk through Thames Path between Kingston and Richmond, which he highly recommends, mm -hmm. and stopped off at Teddington Lock. Yes. We found Benny's last flat and had a pint in his local pub on the riverside. The complete angler. Which has a plaque on the wall yeah. to celebrate him and other Thames giants. Mm. Are you sad that Thames Studio Studios is demolished? Demolished, sorry, in Teddington. Of course, absolutely. I was I was there many times. Um, my late friend David Graham, who did uh, a lot of the the, the Dead Comic Society and then uh, uh, Comic Heritage and the Heritage Foundation, um, they put loads of blue, blue plaques on on there. On it's very sad. Yeah, I mean because I think quite rightly I, lo I love homes i love houses of people be it comedians or, or writers or whoever but a place of work is somewhere where they really you know felt at their most creative and happy certainly benny did mm. um and i was involved with quite a lot of pinewood studios and the same same sort of feel to that this is where they were working this is where the magic happened this is where the stuff that we love to watch happened um so yeah i mean those it's a real it's a really sad thing that that went but like tv center as well bbc Mm. They're, they're 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 cathedrals of of entertainment those places and and it's 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 in the it's in the the bricks of Malta the the stone wall tapes if those walls could could speak um yeah very sad but but you know I, I was pleased when they did did Benny because at least they were remembering his contribution to to television um, which was which was vast okay so Fiona asked did Benny know how much he was loved. I hope so. Again, I think I think so. Yeah, I mean, you can tell by the box office receipts, can't you? You can tell by the by the by the people watching your show. Um, he he got very upset about the fact that British TV wouldn't show his stuff. I mean, it's again a long story, and it's in the book, and it's in various documentaries. But Philip Jones, who's the head of entertainment at Thames TV, basically called him in and said, you know, that's it, Ben. Thank you so much. 
Um, and he went with, as this, the chap said about that pub, um, there's a pub called The Complete Angular, uh, which is on, you know, Teddington Lock. And Ben and Dennis Kirkland went there and said, have we just been fired? <laughs> yeah, I think we have, yeah. And he couldn't quite believe it. So he was really upset. But, you know, he would say, you can see my shows every other country in the world apart from my own which really was quite hurtful mm. and and he he was so upset about it he was and 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 Dennis said look the money's coming in i mean you're being repeated he said it doesn't matter i want to be on television now in my own country so he did one more thing he did a, he, he was doing this thing called Benny Hill's world tour um and there's one huh with the now <laughs> president of the united states in it um he did one set in new york um, which was just mm. before he died, which is which is all right. It's a it's a little bit patchy, but but it's worth seeing for for Benny's last work. Really. I mean, obviously we've talked a bit about America, but where else? What other countries? Uh, was everywhere, he? everywhere, everywhere yeah. else. Oh gosh, yeah, ev everywhere. Loved it. Japan, just loved him. Across Europe, they loved him. I mean, he was he, and still is, I think, to an extent. But certainly, um, and this is why, thankfully, he knew this while he, and to answer my sister's question, he knew he was loved because he would go around France and Switzerland and Germany in like 1991, 92, and he was invited. Uh, Charlie Chaplin was a huge fan of his and I think his grandson who had the house when Benny cause Chaplin died in 77. Um, and Benny and Dennis Kirkland were going around, you know, Chaplin's house and, and Dennis said, look, Ben, look, look. And there was a wall of VHSs of Charlie Chaplin's personal comedy collection. It was all Benny Hill, Benny Hill, Benny Hill, Benny Hill, Benny Hill. And I'm getting quite emotional. Oh, okay. Because well. Benny was really moved by that, and and you know, so yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay. sorry. Another That's... question. Thank Aww. you. Make it make it happy. <laughs> sorry, go on. Um, <laughs> okay. Did you ever meet John? Is it John John? John John Keith? Keith. I did. Yes, absolutely. He was the sort of one of the team. One of the team. Yes, I did. He was lovely. Yeah, they were all lovely. And I, I mean, I, the one I knew most of all was Dennis, who. Sadly, has, has passed away. Dennis Kirkland, his director producer, I, I got on with him really well. Uh, he liked a pint, did Dennis, and so do I. Um, so we would meet either just for for social kicks and have a laugh uh, in the West End or around Teddington, or sometimes we would do sort of uh, radio shows in tribute to Ben together. Not together, but you know, we would meet up and and do our bits independently, and then go for a few beers after. But yeah, I mean, they all they all absolutely adored him. But John John was was a smasher. Yeah, I liked him a lot. Um, is it true that he would write notes in a restaurant and the waiters would think he was reviewing them and subsequently <laughs> got better service? Uh, yeah, that's it. That, well, I don't know about the better service. I'm sure that is true. Uh, that's, that sounds like a Benny sketch, actually. But he would definitely write on the back of postcards and envelopes and things and, as I send them to, to Thames... Uh, to Teddington, to Dennis Kirkland, and these crazy, not sorry, shiri idiots and that sort of stuff <laughs> written on these postcards. Sorry, forgive me, but you know, it's part of the comedy. Um, but yes, absolutely, he would do that. Yeah, he, and he, I think he was happiest, he, he loved performing, but I think he was a writer. I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of comedians love the, the creative process, and he, and he and he really was, he was He was from, from soup to nuts. He, he, he took control of the whole thing, and, and, and Dennis was a brilliant editor and a brilliant filmmaker, but, you know, Ben Ben was was always on his shoulder saying, well, "I might do it this way, or wouldn't it be better if we did that? And can we do this? You know, and all that." There's a great bit because again they would do all these homages to the silent slapstick clowns that Benny loved, and as did Dennis Kirtland. And there's one of my favourites, which I mentioned to Dennis, and he was so chuffed. He said, "Oh God, we both loved that. I'm so glad you saw that." There's a bit where they're doing the chase, and we'll go to the, the how that whole chase thing happens. But there's a bit where there's like a hair in the gate, and you and I'm and you're watching, you think. You know what I mean by hair in the gate? Like the camera, there's a, there's, a, there's a hair got between the camera and the lens, so you can see this little flickery thing. And sometimes you see on old films, there's a hair in the gate, and it's a mistake basically. And you're and you're watching it, and it's about thirty seconds, and it's doing this, doing this, doing this, and the the, the chase is going on, and Ben just sort of stops, and turns around and plucks this hair off the screen and just pings it away. Wow! So you you're actually addressing the the process of making films, and I, it's I'm getting goosebumps. It's one of, it's it's one of my favourite moments of comedy ever. I think oh man, that's that's so you know intertextuality of that. And and Dennis was so chuffed that I loved that bit because they they both roared with laughter. But that was the thing he said to to Dennis, can we can you do that? Can we actually do that? He goes yeah yeah we can do that. So it was Ben's genius idea to do it but Dennis actually was the man that had the technical know-how to make it happen so a good combination those two right is it true that Benny Hill is related to Holly Valance <laughs> <laughs> 
He's asking that. Holly is Holly. You mean Holly Burns, as in as in neighbours? Holly Valance, the the, yeah. the the sexy blonde Australian soap actor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've probably I've probably got it. I've probably got it. I've, as Jen will testify, I've got probably the the hugest collection of nineties girl pop for any man who's nearly fifty. Um, but um, I don't know. I've never heard that. It's possible. I mean, he certainly went to Australia a lot. But whether relation in what way? <laughs> I mean, Gavin, I'm, expand I've that. I've honestly never Where heard that. Heard but, that? <laughs> but I kind of hope. I kind of hope it's true. Um, okay, right. So uh, Ali here asks a question. She says, "says Hello, Robert. Do you think that Benny was really a prude in his private life and not so much in his saucy business?" Persona. I wouldn't say it was a prude. Is this not Ali, my cousin Ali? It's just no, just no, another, no. Another Ali. Hello, other Ali. Um, uh, I don't think it was a prude exactly. No, I, th I think um, uh, no. <laughs> it's, a <laughs> short, it's a short answer. I mean, he, he wasn't. He wasn't salacious. He wasn't. He wasn't a sort of you know. He wasn't uh, um, um, outrageous to the girls uh, offset or anything like that. I mean, he was a real gentleman apparently. Um, had a lovely, lovely flat, uh, Queensgate Muse. Um, you can actually, if you do this walk, oh, the, the chap that was talking about doing the, the Teddington Lock walk, within a space of about sort of a hundred yards, I hope the blue plaques are still there, but, but Benny's house is there, a lovely place he lived in until about 1985, 86. And just around the corner, there's this lovely muse um, bit where Sid James lived in one of his, if not the first place he had when he came over from Johannesburg. And also Terry Thomas had a place there too. So there's literally, and there's a nice booze around the corner as well called the Bram Stoker. Um, <laughs> so you can do a nice little sort of, you know, Sunday jaunt to three of my comedy heroes where they had houses and you can go to the pub as well, which I'm, I'm guaranteeing all three of them went to that pub at one point. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay, so Fiona Ross, do you... Did Benny prefer being in films or on television? Television, for sure, yeah, because uh, he could control TV more. And it was his show. And there was uh, sometimes, as I mentioned before, somebody talking about Jackie Wright, that he loved his team of people. Uh, you know, the oh, Kathy Staff would come in and, and uh, loads of people, like John John Keefe and, and Bob Todd and Henry McGee and all the gang. He loved all and the and the, the Angels, Sue Upton, all those people. Um, and he sometimes... He would read a, a review, or Dennis would bring a review in and say, "Oh, you know, um, Bob Todd, you know, got was really brilliant last night in that episode." And, and Dennis said, "You yeah, okay?" He said, he said, "Look, he said, what's the name of the show? It's the Benny Hill Show, right? It doesn't matter who gets the laughs; it's a team effort." Mm. So he was very magnanimous about that. You know, it was his show, so he could control it. But he he was he was tickled pink when when Bob Todd or Henry McGee got a laugh because he loved them, and he would call he would call um, uh, Henry McGee. Um, SS, Super Stooge. Best stooge in the business, Henry McGee. Um, okay, Robert Simpson's here. Hello, Robert. Friend. How are you doing, darling? He says, hello, darling. Oh, man, he does. Look at that. Yes. Um, he says, your it's... Benny book was the first of yours he bought and who knew it would lead to a friendship. That's he right. didn't know the Titanic story. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, of course, now. Yes, yes, now. Explain. Explain yourself, Robert. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, uh, my friend Robert is based in Belfast and, and, and is the... Uh, official guide and we and when I was over there about 18 months or so uh, we had the the full the full treatment as it were um, which was delicious but yeah he knows your stuff but that's that's right he didn't know that story so he's going to no. investigate that good for good you. it's brilliant uh, but his question for today yes. is um, how did Benny end up working with Jackie Wright how I mean I think they just met I think they were doing uh, was it a telly I think on BB, on BBC one of the tellies but yeah, I mean, that, this, that Jackie Wright is that guy. Sorry, Jim has gone now. I can't do it. I like doing that. I'm not going to give you a headache, Dad. That, that guy, right? Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but again, like I was saying before about Bob Todd getting laughs or Henry getting laughs, he was, he was tickled pink when Jackie Wright got laughs. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was all, all good. Um, okay, we've got a question here from Peter Hancock. Going completely off topic, but just wants to know how far we've got with our carry on -a -thon. Oh, good, good question. <laughs> um, uh, well, we're sort of not stalled. We're Carry On Cowboy was the last one we watched. Um, and we were going to watch, because Friday night is horror night, uh, we were going to watch Karen Screaming um, on Friday and something else came up. What would we watch instead? I can't remember now. Hammer uh, Horrors. Hammer Horrors, yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, Carry On Cowboy. Uh, we're we're, we're, we're ploughing through them. I'm actually, I'm actually really enjoying it. And, I'm, and I said to Jim, this is going back to our first book club, The Carry On Companion, I feel such guilt giving Cowboy just two SIDs, my rating system. God, that's such a good film, Cowboy. What was I thinking? 
We, we need to do another carry-on, I think. We must do another carry-on, yeah. Okay. <laughs> the public demands well, I've got, it. I've written lots of books on the carry-ons. There's plenty of scope for those. Um, okay, Chris Stratton asks, there's also Benny Hill at BBC on Decca in the 1960s? Uh, Decca Records. Um, at the BBC, um, uh, I'm not sure it's a BBC release. Oh, maybe, maybe no, but that's 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 the, the, the Pi Records, because Pi was a, an imprint, wasn't it, of Decca? Um, it's like um, Foods, an imprint of Parlophone, when the Blur records. It's all a Blur, we'll come back to Blur in a minute. Um, but I think those are just, just the rehash of all those 60s singles. They're very good, though, all the Harvest of Love stuff. But talking of Blur, if if you want to look at um, the video for Country House, there's a sort of a lot of Benny reference, because Blur were part of that sort of laddish, you know, lads magazine culture. Um, and if you look at the... Because Keith Allen's in the Country House video. Matt Lucas, who's a, a fellow... Uh, of a mate and a fellow Benny Hill fan, um, plays a milkman on a milk float. A very Benny a la. And there's lots of glamorous girls in it, including Stara Stockbridge. Uh, and, and so it's, that's, that's a real sort of homage to, to Benny, the Country House video. I just thought I'd throw it in because it made me think of it. But anyway, yes, um, I, there's no BBC recordings as such on vinyl, as far as I know. I'm Actually, no, there isn't. But the Decca records are, are the singles of the 60s. OK. Um, and then Andy Straw asks, when Benny starred in the film Light Up the Sky, yeah. he sang the song Touch It Light with the great Tommy Steele. Do you know if they performed it together on stage <clears throat> after the film? Because they worked really well together. I don't think, no, they, they wouldn't have done it. It was, a, it was for a film. It's good, good film. Um, R.E.F., um, late 1958, 59. Um, we and Carl Michael, he was, he was actually in the conflict with, actually, for real, Benny. Um, um, Fritz and Madden. That's a great film. No, I mean, that was the movie. I mean, Tommy still did a lot of good films around that time. He worked with Sid James, obviously, and, and Bernard Cribbins in... Tommy the Toreador, but, they, but you're right, they work really well together. It's a very good film, that. That, again, pops up on Talking Pictures TV uh, occasionally. Um, it's, 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 I think it's probably Benny's best film performance. I've not seen it for a while, but, but he, he's really, I mean, it's funny, but he's, he's playing a sort of vaudevillian, but there's some real sort of serious bits in it, and Benny is incredible. As Fiona was saying about Chit Chit Bang Man, he's a really good film actor, mm. Benny. So, um, but like I say, he preferred doing Teddy, so, but he had offers to do lots of other films, for sure. Um, and do you have a copy of uh, Ernie the Single? I do, of course, <laughs> of course. I've got lots of different versions. I've got an original 1971 um, single, 45, and lots of uh, CDs. I've got all the CDs, I think. But yeah, absolutely, I love it. I, I really do love it. I think it's it's a really, it's a funny, it's one of those rarities. It's a, it's a funny comedy record. Uh, I, I love that whole history. A friend of mine, Brett, who, who is, is a mastermind on, on comedy and, and novelty records, um, but it's a really funny record. And the Ladybirds, who were the backing vocals, who did lots of Benny Hill shows on telly. It just, it just, it's really well produced. It's a really good single. It's and the video is great. So I love the video. Um, uh, two ton Ted from Teddington and all that. Yeah, go on. Two ton Ted. <laughs> right, we've actually, I've, I've, I've mucked up my system now. Have so you, I'm oh just gonna, I'm gonna come back here until I can get back. I can't, there. I can't see anything that's going on. So. Uh, Oh, Who's yeah. questions? Lots of people oh, yeah. saying hello. Hello, oh, my gosh, people are watching it. Oh, something that's what I said to say. Oh, Alan, Al, Al's there. Hello, Al, uh, my dear pal. Go on. Let's just see. Okay, so Lane, do you think he was ever on the Carry On radar? He should have been, but I don't. He wasn't, as far as as far as I know, he wasn't. Um, um, I wish I'd got to know Gerald Tom. I only met Gerald Thomas twice, and I, I never had the chance to sort of sit him down, you know, and really, really grill him. Um, but um. No, I've never seen any any reference at all, and you, and you would have thought, my God, they would have at least offered him something. Um, certainly in the early seventies, but no, as far as I know, he wasn't. Mm, okay, uh, let's just go. But good question, Lane. Thank you. Okay, so Lee Leah Mason, mm -hmm. um, our friend in is... Florida. Wow, yes. look at that man. Uh, I worked for a Japanese company in the eighties, and we cheekily used to go around saying. Why, why are you not with him? <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's whatever you do in the privacy of your own office. No, it, it's very funny. And I think the thing is, although those sketches are probably ones I would not put on television in 2020, they are still very funny and done with great affection. There's the, 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 the key about Benny and his comedy is there's no malice in it at all. Uh, it, he's absolutely 
he, he was a real humanitarian. He loved he loved international travel. He loved international cuisine, and I think I think all those send ups of the Japanese and and Germans and everything else is done with with real heart. So uh, yeah, that's what I take. But yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you did that. <laughs> Right, Gavin sent us a link. We'll have to look at okay. this about the Holly Valance. Oh, great! Okay, <laughs> if it's in if it's in my book, forgive me. I've not read my book since nineteen ninety two, so I may well have mentioned it. But I have, I, I don't think I've heard that ever. But I'm, I can't wait. How um, exciting! And <laughs> Neil White says he thinks um, that Benny was her cousin twice removed. Cousin twice removed. Okay. We we will investigate. And thank you for the well, link. Well, because his sister moved to Australia, so. Yeah, that, yeah. There's a good book by his elder brother Leonard Hill uh, called Saucy Boy. I think one second. Um, Do you want me to grab it? Yeah, you see, you see next to Dennis's book on Benny down there. See right in the middle, that shelf there, right? This one. Saucy Boy. No, next to that one. That's the one. Is it that one by Leonard? Saucy. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. That that book, which will probably look like a mirror image again, yes it does. <laughs> but that's by his brother. That's really good. And I think that relates to the fact that this sister immigrated to Australia, so that could be the link. But that's a that's a that's a good book. I've got I've got so many Benny books down there. <laughs> anyway, um, but yes, yes. Thank you for that. That's interesting. That's that's a little a little link to to uh, read up on later. Okay, Paul Perkins says a link to carry on. Dave Freeman, writer of the Carry On TV shows, Bless This House and Carry On Films, co-wrote a lot of the BBC Benny Hill shows. And I think read that Dave was a bit miffed that some of his sketches that were re rehashed for uh, Teddington shows in the 70s didn't get credit he for. He wasn't, Is it true? no, he wasn't miffed at all. He was one of Benny's best friends, Dave. Um, they, they, Benny recycled all the time. Um, so uh, there certainly are skits that he did on BBC that, that are reheated for, for Thames. But no, they were good friends. I mean, and, and uh, Dave, I, I miss Dave horrendously because he was such a lovely chap and he worked with everybody. He was my sort of hotline. And I was doing a book, I just phoned Dave because he worked with it. Terry Thomas, yeah, he worked with him. Peter Sellers, yeah, he worked with him. Benny, he worked with him a lot. Um, so he was very helpful for the book. Um, I should stop plugging Benny's brother's book and start plugging my own book. <laughs> um, but um, so that book, he, there's lots of quotes from Dave in that, um, and they actually loved each other. Um, they kept in touch until until Benny's death in 1992. So very very friendly. Um, there was a there was a Dave always said this with an absolute chuckle. There was a thing where he a bit like I've just said in the mid 80s when he thought Benny was getting a little bit risque and a bit sort of dubious, you know, or even maybe the late 70s, but certainly when he was doing Thames and Dave wasn't involved in the shows. He phoned Ben up and said, you know, oh, really, do you, I, if I was you, mate, I'd really tone down a bit of that. And he goes, it's a bit rich coming from the bloke who writes the Carry On films, isn't it? You know, so he said, yes, yeah, fair, fair enough. OK. Well, following on to Carry On, would Benny have fitted into a Carry On film? I think absolutely, yeah. I think it would have been brilliant, actually. Br brilliant. What would you have cast him as if you, if you could? Or what do you see him doing? Um, I think he would love to have done Carry On Girls. They are Ben. Um, yeah, I could have seen him in Cowboy. Oh, okay, Cowboy? Well, could you? Ooh. Well, yeah, maybe he did, he did a good western. There's, there's yeah. one, the Halitosis Kid. He did a great sketch, <laughs> <laughs> which is one of my favourites. <laughs> one of the the, the, ni the nicest moments in the afterglow or the aftermath of his death. I think it was the Michael Burke. So it must have been BBC News. Michael Burke was doing was announcing the fact that Ben had died, and they used a little clip of a halitosis kid, and and it cut back to Michael Burke in the studio live, and he's literally crying with laughter, and it's I'm thinking it's one of the mo the nicest what a legacy, you know. I mean, the the man is gone, but the comedy lives on. So yeah, he's a yeah, I'd say it's good though, isn't it? It's a good skit that. Um, it is a good but yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, he would have been great in one. But again, we've had this conversation before that who would you who would you replace? And I and I'd hate to replace anybody, but um, yeah, there we go. Susie Dawkins is here. Hello, darling. How are you? I've not forgotten. It's Sabrina's birthday soon. Nineteenth of May, I think. Is that right? Yeah. Anyway. Special film then. Well, you will give her a mention for sure. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but go hello. How, how are you? Hello. She she just says was going to mention the country house. It's her favourite band. Well, there, well, there you go. Blur. I love Blur too. Yes. I mean, and Benny did a did a a, a, a pop video with Genesis. Anything she goes, wasn't it? Um, with Maria Whitaker, dear Maria. Um, and um, uh, yeah, I think Sue was in it as well. Um, so and Phil Collins is a huge, huge Benny Hill fan. 
So he did that. And there was talk when Benny was very ill in 92 and Michael Jackson visited him you know, in hospital. There was talk of him doing a, a, a video with Michael Jackson as well. But yeah, no, I love I love Country House. That's a, that's a great song. Blow brilliant. OK. Phil Gordon says, hi, guys. I think had Benny lived longer, um, he could have had a great part in The Last of the Summer Wine with Norman Wisdom and Stephen Lewis. Maybe a milkman. What do you reckon? <laughs> I mean, great. Of course, absolutely. I mean, sure, you would, it would have worked for sure. I mean, I think... Uh... Who could, uh, it's impon it's imponderable, isn't it? That that if that central TV series had happened, I mean, it might have relit a whole new career. Um, yeah, he was great, I, and I think uh, he got through. If he lived into the sort of the lad mag generation and into the sort of the the mid nineties and the the whole blur and, and all that and loaded magazine and all that, he would have been like a god, wouldn't he? Benny he would have been sort of the, the patron saint of of lads mags, really. So um, even with the sort of postmodern irony about it, he would have definitely got work for sure. Yeah, but you know, hey, that's showbiz, folks. We, we're getting to the end no. of this already. I know. I've really enjoyed this. One. You're you're getting asked. You should be lecturing at Rada on comedy. <laughs> Who's asked? Is, if we'll talk to the Rada. Um, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, and lots of people just saying how much they love your book. And uh, you, Fiona's asking, can we have another week on Benny? <laughs> Well, well I, I don't, I'm happy to do that, but or, or I maybe have... have a break. I don't know what. I, I, we have a because it's the last what the last not the last one ever, but the last one before my big birthday next week. And I, we were just talking about doing something else, but we'll, we'll we'll have a glass of wine after this and we'll discuss it. But you know, I'm happy to do Benny again. I, You've I, written so many books. I know I have. So many I'm people. Very, very privileged to have had a, a long career. One last question that's come in from Gavin, and he says, um, "Have you seen the play about Benny that was on at the Edinburgh Fringe in 2018?" I did see it. Yes, very good. It's very good. And I and there's, there's a whole sort of again, he's always used as a great iconog free about comedy that shouldn't have happened but that was really really good yes absolutely and there's there's, there's i may be working on something too at this very moment that's all i'm gonna say but anyway <laughs> oh i'll even want more look at that um, well look i'm not i'm locked down i've got nothing else to do i've got to got to i can at least i can write still john so, burrs uh, just said i'm just gonna read this out thank yeah. you for doing these live chats really fascinating something very positive in troubled times oh bless you thank you well that's absolutely what we're doing so like i said on the film today if you if, if you get a smile out of these then that's all we're doing it for seriously um but it's an absolute treat so yes and thanks to Gemma for being as always a brilliant interviewer and uh, making it so easy and fielding all your lovely questions Sorry so. if I miss anybody's as well. Well, we're we'll doing we'll do Mark too. If not next week, then, then, then you know, afterwards. Um, I don't know where... You, I'm going nowhere, kids, so I'm staying at home, right? Um, so I advise you do the same. Um, and uh, I'd love to have seen Benny do Johnson. That would have been great, wouldn't it? Benny would have been brilliant at Boris. What a fantastic parody that would be. Um, anyway. That's there we go. <laughs> On that note, I shall leave it. Or is it... Is it Benny? Did he really not die? Did he fake his death and now become Prime Minister? <laughs> I'll leave you with that thought. But there we go. Take bye -bye. care. All the best. Bye. Bye-bye.